वेलकम एवरी वन टू वी एम वयर बेसीिक नैटवर्किंग ट्यूटोरियल इन दिस सैशन वी गण लेर्न अबउट वी स्वियर डिस्ट्रिब्यूट स्विच इन दिस सैशन वी गण कवर वाट ईज डिस्ट्रिब्यूट स्विच इन वी एम वयर देन अबउट पोर्ट ग्रूप एंड अप्लिंग पोर्ट ग्रूप देन वी गण सी दि आर्किटेक्चर ऑफ डिस्ट्रिब्यूट पोर्ट ग्रूप then we enter to the demo how to create a distributed switch then how you can add exsi to that distributed switch then how to create the different port groups then how to assign virtual machines to port group these are the basic things that you deal in a vmware distributed switch further to this there are some additional configurations required for optimizing your network performance and all that you will see in the coming session in this session our scope is limited to the following let's recap what we have learned in the previous video about standard switch so standard switch you configure at individual host level it means you log into your exsi host and you configure your standard switch one by one then you configure port group then you give uplink connectivity then you have to configure the policies to each exsi host standard switch is available by default with all the exsi version and there are some features limited and that is not available to standard switch like uh, inbound traffic shaping load based teaming like that the major difference between a standard switch and a distributed switch is the management and load balancing private vlan like that we will see all these features in distributed switch from the management level when you want to configure a standard switch you need to log into each exsi host but when it come to a distributed switch the switch that we going to discuss in this video session helps you to manage this configuration centrally from vcenter a distributed switch you configure and manage it from vcenter and it is available from vcenter enterprise edition onwards and it provide inbound and outbound traffic shaping load based teaming private vlan network vmotion and you can backup and restore a distributed v switch configuration look at the picture we have three exsi host and each host have three physical network adapters and we have vmware vcenter server and this three exsi host has added to those vcenter server i want to create a distributed switch in this vcenter server and add exsi host to that vcenter server so that all the virtual machines all the exsi host i can connect to that distributed switch and that will help me to configure and manage it centrally from vcenter server so the first step is to create a vsphere distributed switch after that i have to add this exsi host to the vsphere distributed switch that we have just created this will help you to choose exsi host that you need only to participate in that distributed switch group because so in your environment maybe you don't need all the exsi host to be a part of this vsphere distributed switch in that case you can choose the exsi host that need to be a part of this vsphere distributed switch once you have added this exsi host to distributed switch the next step is to create a uplink port group then the next step is to assign the network interface physical network interface card to uplink port group of vsphere distributed switch after that you can create port group like production test and that is going to be available for all the exsi host let's take a look at the two new abstractions that comes in vmware distributed switch the first one is uplink port an uplink port or a dv uplink port group that are the that are the two terms uh, that we call uplink port group which is defined during the creation of a distributed switch which can have one or more than one uplinks so this uplinks you use to configure your physical connections of host and also with this uplink port group you can configure 
failover and load balancing policies of physical adapter of your EXSI host. So what you do, you map your physical network card to the host so that work as an uplink on the distributed switch. So at the host level, each physical network interface connected to an uplink is with a particular ID and you can set failover and load balancing policies over uplinks and these policies are automatically propagated to all the EXSI host in that distributed switch. The second one is distributed port group. What we learned in the vSphere standard switch about port group is same as distributed port group. The only difference is it is distributed across all the EXSI host. So it is used for the network connectivity to virtual machines and to accommodate VM kernel traffic. And you can configure an IC teaming, failover, load balancing, VLAN, security and traffic shaping and other policies on distributed port group. So the virtual ports that are connected to a distributed group share the same properties that you configure for distributed port group. And also the configuration that you set on a distributed port group or from a vCenter is automatically going to propagate to all the hosts on the distributed switch. In this way you can just configure a group of virtual machines to share same network configuration by associating that virtual machines to same distributed group regardless of where the virtual machine is running. Learning architecture is uh, important when you learn anything. So let's go through the vSphere distributed switch architecture. Because when I explain about the VMware vSphere distributed switch, uh, a question that usually comes in mind is that what will happen when my vCenter goes down? The answer is understanding the architecture. So vSphere distributed switch consists of two logical sections that are data plane and management plane as you see in the picture. The data plane implements the package switching, filtering, tagging and so on. And the management plane is the control structure that you use to configure the data plane functionality. So this was also there in the vSphere standard switch. vSphere standard switch also contain the data and management plane. But that sits in the same EXSI and you configure and manage it individually from the EXSI host. In a vSphere distributed switch, the data plane and management plane are separate. Data plane sits in the EXSI host and the management plane sit in the vCenter level. So the management functionality of a distributed switch uh, resides on the vCenter will help you to administer the network configuration of your environment from the data center level. And the data plane remains locally on every host that is associated with the distributed switch. So the data plane section of this distributed switch is called as a host proxy switch. So the network configuration that you create on vCenter server, that is a management plane, is automatically pushed down to all the host proxy switch, or uh, that is data plane. So by this way, when the vCenter is down, still all your virtual machines which run on the EXSI host continue to work because vCenter is just a management plane. You cannot modify any configurations when vCenter server is down, but whatever the existing configurations will continue to work. Next, we're going to see a demo on how to create a vSphere distributed switch. For this demonstration, I have two EXSI hosts and we're going to add two EXSI hosts to do vSphere distributed switch. Then we create port group for protection and test like what we did in the vSphere standard switch demonstration. After that, we're going to assign virtual machines to port group. Scope of this video, this demo is limited to the task listed here. There are other things like traffic shaping and IC teaming, load balancing. Those will be covered in the coming video. Log into VMware vCenter. Then you can see there are two EXSI hosts here. Just go to settings and see virtual switch, VM kernel adapter and physical adapter. You look at the virtual switch, you can see there are two vSphere standard switch called vSwitch 0 and pSwitch. This is the one we created in the previous demo. And there are production and test and vMotion VM kernel adapters are there. 
Here we have two VM kernel adapters, one is vMotion and the other one is management. In the physical adapter, you see the first two are in use with uh, vSphere standard switches, that is vSwitch and uh, vSwitch 0. And the other two, we're going to use it for our distributed switch. So we will be assigning two and three for distributed switch. So we're going to create a vSphere distributed switch. So from your vCenter, go to the main networking tab, then expand your data center. You can see the existing vSphere standard switch here. Anyway, right click and go to distributed switch, then click on new distributed switch. You can see by default D switch. Let's go with uh, D switch or you can give any custom name here. And here if you are using any mixed environment like 6.0, 6.5, then go for the best version that fit to your organization. Here I have all 6.7, so I'm going to use 6.6, .6, the latest one, what available here. Then number of uplinks, this is the maximum uplink per host that you can change any time from here. Then you can enable network IO control. Then you can see it create by default a port group. Uh, if, if you don't want this port group, you can just untick that here. I'm just gonna accept this. So once I create this switch, there will be a default port group, D port group. Click next. Then finish the settings. You can see the next recommended sessions are add and manage host that we're gonna do. Let us finish this from here. Now you see. An additional DS switch tab is available. Just go and expand. You can see D port group, that is a default port group just created. And when we explained uh, in the presentation, I told you there is a uplink group that gonna create when you create a VSphere distributed switch. That is what you see here now. So let us add EXSI host to this VSphere distributed switch. For that, right click and click on add and manage host. Then select add host then click next then new host only two exi host what we have here just select uh, all the exi host then click next at this point we're going to assign the uplinks for which we distributed switch so i told you we're going to choose two and three of all exi host and going to assign for the uplink group so let's do that here you can assign it manually or you can just say automatically so I'm going to assign it uh, just manually. What you see from one to eight uplinks are the maximum number of uplinks per host that we choose when we create a distributed switch. So do this for all the EXSI host. So we finished with the assign of uh, uplinks to uh, uplink port group just click next at this point you can migrate uh, any of the vm kernel port you're already using with vsphere standard switch to the port group that we have created with the distributed uh, switch uh, we can skip this we can do this later so to do this you need, just need to uh, select the distributed port group from here then click ok Anyway, we're not, we're not going to migrate it now. We will see it later. So just click next. At this point, you can migrate your existing virtual machines to vSphere distributed switch. So when you create a vSphere distributed switch, the wizard will help you even to migrate uh, uh, those to uh, the vSphere distributed switch. You can see, you can just choose this distributed port group if you want. Then once you click OK, this virtual machine is going to assign to this port group. So you have added two hosts to VSphere distributed switch and for physical adapter. Let's click OK. And from the recent task, you can see configuration of VSphere distributed switch has completed. When you go to network, you can see that you have a D port group. We didn't configure any VLAN. You can see uplink port group from here and you can see there is no virtual machines assigned at this moment and there are two hosts connected to it so next we're gonna create port groups then we have to assign these virtual machines to 
protection and text port group as we did in the vSphere standard switch demonstration. So for that, go to networking, then expand the data center, then open DB switch, then from here you can right click and you can create new distributed port group. So I'm gonna create the first one, production, then click next. Here you can assign the number of ports that you need. Let's put eight and you have different options. This we will discuss then allocation and all we will discuss in the next video. Here you can choose VLAN. So I'm gonna put 100. This is the configuration that we did in the standard switch. Then click next, then finish. Next, we have to create text port group. For that, repeat the same step. Test, then click next. You can choose number of ports you required. Then the VLAN ID here is 101. Then click finish. Now we have two production group ready with a different VLAN. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna go to the virtual machines here. Then we will change the current network settings, the current port group to the new one we have just created. For that right click on the virtual machine, then edit settings. Then from here you see uh, this is assigned to test group of standard switch. But what I need, I need the test group of distributed switch. Then click OK. The next machine I want to assign to production port group and that is belongs to distributed port group. So I'm going to change this to production distributed switch. Then click OK. Now the network has changed to distributed group for both virtual machines. So now you can see the topology of vSphere distributed switch, the D port group which by default created and we didn't assign any VLAN ID or virtual machine to this port group. The second one production we have created and we give a VLAN ID VLAN 100 then we have one virtual machine in it. And also we created a test port group then we assign VLAN 101 ID and we have one virtual machine assigned. So the port group part is clear. Then when you look at the DV uplink group, you see that there are four network interface card and two belongs to each EXSI host. As you have multiple VLAN here, you need to make sure that you configure this port as trunk in your switch. Here in my case, it is a Cisco switch connector and I have shown you how to configure a trunk in vSphere standard switch. So the next step is to configure trunk here so that this interface will pass all the VLANs that you assigned or that you tagged in that trunk port group. Next let's have a look at the EXSI host to see the proxy switch that we explained in the architecture. When you go to the individual EXSI host, you see, go to the networking and from here you see an additional switch named D switch. And you see there is a difference in the icon also. And it shows you there are two uplinks connected and what are the port groups connected and all. You don't have much information here because this is a host proxy switch and you mostly control this from the vCenter. That is all about this session. In the coming session, we're gonna see how to configure the LACP, private VLAN, NetFlow, port mirroring, health checkup and also some of the inner configurations that you can do in uh, D switch and D port group and uplinks. So thank you for watching this video. Let's continue in the next session.